Hello everyone and thank you for joining me at The Lonely Vine. Uh, so we got a wine Wednesday today. Wine Wednesdays we target wines that are under $20. Um, today, you know, you, you'll see you know, questions come up sometimes and it's like, you know, if you were stranded on a desert island, um, what would be the one varietal you would take with you? Or what would be the one region you'd uh, want your wines from and to that question you know a lot of people will say Bordeaux a lot of people will say Champagne or Chardonnay uh, Riesling um, for me it begins and ends in the Loire Valley from France um, there the you know that region um, to me you know you've got sparkling wines You've got white wines, you've got your red wines, you've got sweet white wines, um, you know, and you have classics. You have your Sancerre's, you have your Chinon, you have your Vouvray. And the wine that we're having today is going to be on the western side of the Loire in the uh, Pays Ninkais uh, region. And it's going to be a um, Muscadet. And this one is a uh, Muscadet, it is from the Sevry et Me. Uh, region within the Pays uh, region. Uh, so this is going to be a uh, um, Melon de Bergeon grape. Sorry, I had to make sure I was going to try and say it right there. And I'm sure I butchered it, but you know, that's how I roll. So, and you can see, you know, I, you probably, I don't know if you can see this on the bottle and it says it down here as well uh, that this wine is sur lis uh, that means on the leaves uh, and that what that basically means is that when they put them in the barrels or whatever they're gonna to age the, the wines and they leave the yeast in with the wine uh, what that does is it generally adds some creaminess and some body as that uh, dead yeast you know releases um, profiles into into the wine so that's what you'll generally get with this um, this is going to be you know this is a 2009 vintage these are wines that are really meant to be consumed young uh, usually three years is about max so I'm really you know I'm kind of at that uh, edge of where you, you should be consuming these there are um, plenty of uh, muscadets that you that will age for 10 plus years, uh, but you really need to know where you're getting them from, what kind of soil they're in, things like that, which I don't know about this one. Um, so I'm gonna drink it today. Uh, gonna be lower in alcohol, this is a uh, 12%. You know, that's the limit usually that you'll see for uh, Muscadet wines. Uh, and you know, if, you, in, if you're, um, yeah, okay. I was gonna go somewhere, but held off you, you know you, you may th see see the muscadet and you may think moscato totally different things here uh, this is going to be a dry wine um, it should be light uh, should have some good aromatic properties you know and this is a wine that really comes from a region that's right next to the atlantic ocean uh, pretty close to it you know so it has a lot of those you know you can expect some of that minerality um, you, you know and as far as like pairings you know, the classic uh, pairing with a muscadet is going to be oysters. You can really pair it with any seafood, shell, shellfish, uh, pastas with, a, with a, a white sauce in it. And with the acidity that should be in this wine, even, you know, a lot of your creamier uh, pasta based sauces will go really good with this because that acidity will really cleanse your, really cleanse your palate and cut through that richness. So. Let's have a drink. You know, so, and sometimes you'll see a little bit of a, a little bit of residual bubbles in there. I'm not seeing any in this one. Color-wise, this is pretty straw yellow. It's pretty light. Um, yep, yeah, straw yellow, I'd say somewhat light. Let's get my nose, I'm already smelling, getting aromas off of this. This is when you need that smell vision, and I can just get it right up there and you can 
get your nose on your computer screen someday. Okay, so right away I get that, you know, a sense of that minerality uh, that, that I could expect. It's pretty tight though. Once I, I, you know, at first, you know, when I was moving it around, I was getting a lot of aromas, but as I'm getting my nose into it, it's kind of tight. I am getting some, uh, some apple, you know, some green apple kind of things in there. I'm getting... Um, You know, I'm also getting a little bit of pear. And that, you know, but that overall, that wet rock, that wet stone that I talk about sometimes, you know, um, a rainy day, you know, out in your driveway, that kind of after, after the rain smell. You know, and there's a little bit of a... I wouldn't expect it, but there's almost like this hint of like a pepper kind of smell. It's really faint, um, but it's kind of hiding in there. It hits me every now and then. You know, and um, there's, al there's almost a, a, a saltiness uh, kind of aroma in there. So, you know, I like, I like the aromas of wine. I like um, looking at it, um, experiencing it, talking about it. So I will stop now and we will, I will taste this wine. Okay. Really interesting profile in this one. Um, you know, it, it even just while I was while I was ha had the wine in my mouth, I could feel and sense the flavors uh, changing. So I'm going to take another drink here. I'm getting that acidity. There's a brininess almost to this. Uh, there's that, there is that, um, you know, I do get that minerality big time, especially on the finish. Um, I get, a, I, I get a sense of the, of the, the peach uh, flavor there, but really a lot of that minerality, um, there's a little bit of that, you know, like I was saying, that brininess to it. Really interesting flavor profile. Uh, decent finish to it, not a lot, but I really wouldn't expect much. You know, in the acidity, I'm still feeling the acidity in here. I would, um, I don't think you can really find this one, this vintage anymore being a 2009 um, but if I remember right I think this was you know a 14 or 15 dollar bottle good stuff uh, good wine you know like, like I was saying before uh, to go with seafood um, you know, the light pasta dishes, this would go really well with it. I think this one maybe, you, you know, it, it would, there would probably be a little bit more to it if I had drunk it um, a year or two earlier, uh, but this has still got really good flavors, really good, you know, that earthy, that brine, you know, the, the brininess to it uh, coming through. Really tasty, 
um, interesting, you know, something that you don't see a lot of um, in other wines. So if you can find one, not this vintage, but other ones, I would uh, suggest picking it up. And this was, I don't know if I said it or not, but this is a uh, Kermit Lynch wine. You know, I'm a fan of his whenever I can get my hands on him, I usually do. Let's see, we'll say that's it for today for the uh, under $20 wines. Um, let's see, for, so question for the show. You know, since I talked about it uh, earlier, if you had the one wine region, um, you know, and, and the, you know, if you're talking about U.S., that could be a state, you know, so if you want to say California, that would probably be a good one. Uh, but, you know, maybe you're a, a South America, somewhere, you know, somewhere down there fan. But if you could only have one wine region, the wines from one wine region uh, for the rest of your days, uh, what would it be? Mine would obviously be Lower Valley. And uh, I'll be interested to hear what yours are. I hope you can leave a comment. You know, if you're on the website, right about there, I think, you can sign up right there. Sign up for my email alerts. Um, nothing will be used for that other than when I post new content, you'll get an email alert uh, taking you with a link to uh, the new content. That's all it'll be used for. And like I said, it's right about there, I think. So enter your e email address and subscribe. I'd love to see you on there. And uh, that should do it for today. Until next time, everybody. Cheers.